these sort of books, is there ever any fear for like your life or your safety? Uh, just no, I you're... just there's not a thing like that. I mean, uh, you're just t you're telling stories that happened a long time ago. You know, I mean, these are really they're like they're you know they happened something like 30, 40 years ago. I mean, to me, they're just it's it's like they're they're history books, um, but it's just a different uh, different history than most people mm -hmm. focus on. You know, um, but you have to look at the underworld as well. I mean, that's part of the society. Um, so I, you know, I'm definitely, um, you know, it's like the same people where people watch The Godfather. I mean, people, you know, they're interested in a world that's not theirs and a the world that has its own rules, its own codes. Um, and so it, it makes, you know, you know, for, it definitely makes for interesting reading. Mm -hmm. Your second book. Um, your second book was also a little bit about the mafia gangster lifestyle. Yeah. Like, How did you start that project, and can you just give us well, an overview? The Mad Ones uh, is a book about gangster Crazy Joe Gallo. Um, he's sort of celebrated in a Bob Dylan song called Joey, uh, and he was, you know, he kind of had a reputation as this, um, like this very chic gangster. I mean, he's like, you know, the guy looked like a movie star. Um, he was quick-witted. He was like a gangster out of the movies. And so the press was sort of fascinated by this guy in the 1960s. And uh, Crazy Joe Gallo, you know, he and his brothers, the Gallo brothers, they were like a really notoriously tough gang in Red Hook, Brooklyn, um, working for one of the five families. Like, they ended up going on a, uh, you know, they, took, they went to the mattresses. You know, they hold up with shotguns and you know, fought it out on the streets of Red Hook against, uh, you know, against the family because, uh, you know, they wanted, you know, they wanted respect. They wanted their share of, you know, what they felt was due to them and what they felt that they weren't getting from the family. So it was a bona fide revolution in the Mafia that was the, the Gallo brothers waged. Um, so, you know, and only for Joey Gallo to go and become a, like a, like a, a literary celebrity, you know, he got he got like a book deal, and he was hanging out with the literati uh, in the early 1970s. You know, when you first moved to New York, one of the things you do is you go check out Little Italy, uh, and there used to be a place, Umberto's Clam House, and the story was, well, yeah, that's where Crazy Joe Gallo got whacked, uh, and I was like, well, who's Crazy Joe? So, uh, I, you know, I'd heard his name sort of around just through, oh yeah, this is like a with the, you know, he was this famous victim of this gangland slaying in Little Italy, um, and then I you know came back around because actually Nicky Barnes had told me about Crazy Joe Gallo and they were friends when they were in prison together in the 1960s and they had plans to you know take over the underworld together. So I guess that brings us to your new book. Yeah, um, you actually have a copy of it here. Yeah, uh, the Dennis Hopper. Hopper. A lot of people may know you know Dennis Hopper from movies like Speed and right. things like that, but yeah, you know you. You tell us that he has like a much deeper history. Can you just give us a brief overview of like some of the things you found out about him that made you want to write this book? Yeah, I mean, I um, the first time I remember seeing something with Dennis Hopper was uh, was actually Apocalypse Now. I saw that in college, and you know you have Dennis Hopper out there in the jungle, and he's you know jabbering, and he's got his cameras all over him, and I mean to me that seemed like. I mean, it was sort of the most dangerous thing I think I'd ever seen on film. You know, because it was like, that guy seems truly scary. You know, what is up with him? So that really sort of stuck with me. Um, and then I got to seeing films like Blue Velvet, where he's playing Frank Booth, and he's delivering these lines, you know, that should be funny, but coming out of him, they're just they're terrifying. Um, and then, of course, you know, everyone sort of has the rite of passage of seeing Easy Rider, and it's sort of, you know, it's hard to connect all these different, it's like, oh yeah, that's the guy from Apocalypse Now, that same guy who's like, you know, riding next to Peter Fonda, you know, on his chopper, you know, that's Hopper. He, and then you find out, wow, Dennis Hopper actually directed this film, too. Um, and then you go back further, and I found out, like, wow, Hopper was, his, he was in Rebel Without a Cause, you know, with James Dean in 1955. Um, and then you find out he was hanging out with Andy Warhol in the 60s, and he actually bought one of the first Andy Warhol soup cans. So it's like, okay, this guy, like, what is going on with this guy's life? And so that really attracted me um, to a story, because I thought it could be, you know, bigger than just, like, a, a biography about a Hollywood guy. Um, 
but like a real narrative about a guy who's traveling through all these different scenes of pop culture, um, all the way up to, you know, he does the film Colors about the gang scene in South Central in 1988, like three years before films like Boys in the Hood come out. Um, so, I mean, the guy definitely, he had his pulse on what was happening sort of, you know, before everyone else did. And so I thought just following his journey and what he's seeing and all these scenes that he's getting into would make like a terrific book. Mm-hmm.